Hello friends. So in this program, in this uh, video, we are going to study about the dynamic programming. So what is dynamic programming? Dynamic programming is also one of the technique for problem solving, which we have seen different types before this one. We have seen divide and conquer, brute force technique, greedy method. We have seen. So this is also another kind of problem solving technique that is the dynamic programming. So what is this dynamic programming? So as the name itself will indicate, dynamic means don't think that something which happens uh, at the moment. So dynamic means it is planning. Okay, we are planning how to solve the problems and then we are making a series of decisions. So we are planning how to solve a problem and then making the decisions while solving the problem. This is same as that of the divide and conquer method. So we have already seen divide and conquer method. What happens in that? A big problem is given and that is divided into small sub problems and each sub problem is solved individually and then the result is combined. Is it not? Same method is also followed here but only one difference here is in divide and conquer the sub problems are independent of each other. Means whatever uh, solution you have got for one sub problem that is nowhere concerned or nowhere related with another sub problem but here it is not like that the sub problems are not independent means once we are calculating the solution of one sub problem then what we are going to do we are going to store it in the form of a table so we are going to store the problems in the form of the table in the form of the table and then use those sub solutions in our further sub solution solving so this is the main difference between the dynamic uh, programming and the divided conquer here. Some problems are not independent. So dynamic programming is a problem solving technique in which we are going to plan and make a series of decisions for getting into the final solutions. Here the again problem is divided into sub problems but the sub problem solutions are not independent. Only once the solution of a sub problem is calculated and it is stored in the form of a table. So next time it is not recalculated. When that particular solution is required from the table the solution is taken and the procedure is again continued. So like this we are going to solve using the dynamic problem. So which are the different types of problem statements we can solve using this dynamic programming? We are having a portions, floyds, knapsack, multi-stage probe, then multi-stage graphs, then we are having optimal binary search trees. So like this, there are different problems which we can solve using this dynamic programming. So we will see them one by one in our video. So now first we will be seeing about the multi-stage graphs. This is the first problem we are solving using the dynamic program. So here we are having the graph. So what is first of all, first let us understand what is a multi-stage graph. So in multi-stage graph we are having a collection of vertices and edges. And here the vertices are present in terms of stages. And the edges are connected from one vertex to another vertex such that the edge is moving from one stage to another stage in the forward direction. The edges are moving from one stage to another stage in the forward direction, not in the backward direction. So this is a multi-stage graph. See here, this we are having the stage 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertices are present in stage 2. 6, 7, 8 are present in stage 3. 9, 10, 11 in stage 4 and 12 at stage 5. So, this is a multi-stage graph where we are having the collection of vertices and edges in such a way that the edge is moving from one vertex from one stage to the another stage in the forward direction. And there are only one, there is only one vertex in the first stage and the last stage. So, in this multi-graphs, there is only one vertex in the first stage and the last stage. So the first vertex is called as the source vertex and the vertex in the last stage is called as the sink vertex. Okay. So now we are going to find we are having different paths from moving from 1 to 12 from source to sink. But we have to 
next let us see now we have finished stage number 5 stage number 4 next we are going to stage number 3 now okay in stage number 3 let us see how to do so in stage number 3 i have made 6 7 8 so cost of what should come here 3 third stage sixth vertex okay third stage sixth vertex now you can see that this six is having two edges between six and five i have to find the minimum edge to which is going to the next stage i have to find the minimum edge which is going to the next stage now you can see and tell me that six and five five is the minimum but five is going to ten six is going to nine they are going to other vertices so by looking at that you cannot find so there is no formula for that what we will find there is minimum of that we have to find minimum of cost of edge uh, six to nine plus cost of what is number nine that is fourth vertex fourth stage ninth vertex and another edge is cost of six to ten plus cost of fourth stage ten vertex i'll explain this one now so what you have to find here is weight of this plus cost of this vertex weight of this edge plus cost of this vertex which is minimum you have to find cost of this edge plus cost of vertex and cost of this edge and cost of this vertex now i am using here c and cost c is indicating the weight of the edge c is indicating the weight of the edge cost this cost is indicating the weight of this vertex cost is indicating the weight of this vertex i have forgotten this one cost of nine vertex is four see the cost of nine vertex is four cost of 10 is two cost of 11 is five this is cost of vertex this is cost cost of vertex this c is weight of this edge so how we are finding when there are two edges moving from one vertex to another vertex what we are finding we are finding the minimum of weight of this edge plus cost of that vertex and weight of this edge and cost of this vertex okay so have you understood this one let us substitute the values here so this is minimum of what is it C of six comma nine. C means what? C is the weight. Weight of six comma nine is how much? Six plus cost of four stage nine vertex. Cost of nine vertex is four here. Comma cost of six comma ten. What is the weight of six comma ten? It is five plus cost of ten vertex. Cost of ten vertex is two. So this is a which is minimum. This is ten. This is seven. Which is minimum. This one is minimum. So cost of third stage sixth vertex is what seven is third stage sixth vertex. Third stage sixth vertex is seven. And who has given me this seven value? This seven value is coming from the second part. Which vertex is involved? The vertex involved is ten, fourth stage, tenth vertex. So the, I told you this D will give you the minimum cost of going to the next vertex. So who is giving you this minimum cost to go to the next vertex? Ten is giving you the minimum cost. So D is equal to ten here. Okay. So this is the cost of third stage, sixth vertex. Next we are going for. Cost of third stage seven vertex. Again, we are having the two edges. So again, we have to find the minimum. How do we find that? Minimum of weight of seven to nine. Weight of seven to nine plus cost of fourth stage vertex number nine. See this one plus cost of nine. Next, this one plus cost of ten. So this is what here seven to ten, seven to ten plus cost of fourth stage 
Yes. Yeah.